Hello everyone, and welcome to your Igor Pro tutorial. Um, so today I'm going to be going through um, the things that you're going to need to know for doing your lab reports in CE 415-515. Um, I'm going to be doing this video in stages because I've been running into issues with um, having the videos getting corrupted when they're too long. A bunch of different things. So we're going to go ahead and do this in just a few different stages here. Um, so the first stage here, I'm going to show you how to load data and how to convert your data from volts into uh, parts per billion within Igor and, and displaying it in table. So the three files you're going to be working with today um, are from last year's CE415 class um, from November 25th, 26th, and 27th. We also have the LAR data masher, which is a set of uh, code that uh, you can use um, for um, analyzing your data. And so I'm going to start out showing you how to get the data um, out of these text files and into Igor. Um, so the first way is using Excel. Um, so to use Excel, we first need to open an Excel sheet, which apparently I'm challenged at doing even that. Um, let's find the Excel sheet here. So we'll open a blank sheet. Um, and then first, we'll just open up our uh, first file. We'll just hit Control on the file. I hit here, I hit Control, I selected to hit Control A to select all the data. Control C to copy it, and then moved over here and clicked Control V to paste the data. So then we'll scroll down to the bottom, open up our second data file, again hit Control A to select all, Control C to copy, and then click below, hit Control V to paste. I'll then um, delete, right click, and then click delete on that header row because we want to delete all of the, uh, the text. Uh, because we have text values in the middle of a data wave, uh, Igor is not going to be happy with that. Um, and then we'll go ahead and load our last file into Excel. I will delete, again, delete this row. And go back up to the top. You can see here that all of your data is in just one column. So to get that into, in, into multiple columns, we'll go click on the Data tab, click Text to Column, use Delimited, and since this is a comma delimited format, we'll click on comma, and you can see that when we click on comma, it spreads all the data into its indiv own individual columns. So I'll click finish, and there we have it. All of our data is in um, unique columns. So we can close out all these files again. Um, open Igor. Then we'll just select all of these columns. We'll hit Control C to copy them, and then we'll click hit Control V to paste all of our data into Igor. And there you have it. You have discrete waves for each of your different pieces of the data, all in Igor. So, that's how you get data into Igor using Excel. Data Igor has its, has built-in functions for getting data into it uh, internally, so we're going to go ahead and just open Igor itself. Um, and we're going to use the, uh, um, the function in the LAR data master to pull um, data into Igor. So we're going to click File, Open File, and Procedure to open the LAR data master procedure. We'll click on that. I already have it on desktop here, so I'm not sure where my data master is, so I'll click Open. Here we have all of our code. Um, we're not really going to have to deal with the code at all. We'll just go ahead and minimize that. And then we'll click on the Macros tab, and we'll click the data master macro. And then we have our data master control panel right there. So to load our data, first we need to tell the uh, tell Igor which path our data is going to be in. So we click Find Path. I'll just click Browse, and I'll click Desktop, because that's where all of my data is. I'll click OK and OK. Then I'll select my first file. You can see it's got all of the, the three different data files here. I'll select the first one, which is the 1125 file chronologically. In the last one chronologically, which is the 27th, we'll click Load Files. You can see down here that the data has been loaded. To display the data in a table, we'll click Windows, New Table. Then we will just highlight all the data. So I clicked on the top, then I held Shift and clicked on the bottom. I click Do It, and that makes a table with all the data that we are going to want to analyze today. So. You might notice here that the time is sort of in a funky format. It's just in one really big number. Um, in scientific notation here, if we want to look at um, the data 
in all of its glory, or the numbers in all their glory, we can right click on the top and click go to digits. And if we select 10 digits, it'll show all of the all of the digits in these numbers, all the sig figs in the numbers. So what this what this uh, time format is is it's seconds since 1970 because that is what the DAC factory software, which is our data acquisition software, that's how um, it 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 uh, measures time. The issue is that Igor measures time in seconds since 1901. So I'll go ahead and show you if I change the format. So again, I'm right clicking here, going to format. If I click on date and time. You can see that the date is 11-24-1948, not 11-25-2014. So of course that is wrong. So the way we're going to correct that is we're going to basically add the seconds, all the seconds in between 1901 and 1970. So the way we do that is we type in the time. That is the name of our time wave that we want to operate on. We, we type in plus equals. That means we're going to add to each element of this wave. Um, Date two sex nineteen seventy comma one comma one. That's essentially saying um, this is just all of the seconds between the beginning of Igor time and nineteen seventy um, January first. So we'll hit enter. Oh, what did I do wrong here? Oh, I forgot the S and date to sex. There we go. All right. Perfect. So now our time looks right. We're on 11:25, which is the first day of our data file. The end of our the end of our time is the end of 11:27, which is the end of our data file. So that all seems to check out. Okay. So then the next thing we're going to want to do is um, convert our uh, our voltage readings, which we have here in our data file, into parts per billion. So I'm not going to work on every single wave here. I'm just going to go for, I'm going to use, I'm going to work on the NOx, ozone, or NO, sorry, NO, ozone, um, CO, and NOx. So what I'm going to do is duplicate all of those waves. Um, we're going to want to leave these, these raw data waves in their purest form, just in case we make a mistake down the road. We want to have our raw data still available to us. So I'll just go ahead and minimize that table and get it out of the way. Um, I will go ahead and duplicate those waves. So to do that, again, you go, you click on the data tab, you click on duplicate waves. We're going to select the days, waves we want to duplicate. So first we'll do CO. I'm going to call it CO PPB because I'm going to convert it into PPB. Um, when you guys are doing this, you might want to add a, for example, put in the name of the instrument because you're probably going to have two instruments worth of data uh, for your comparisons, but I'm not going to do that this example because I want to keep things as simple as I can. Okay, so I've got CO duplicated. I will go ahead and duplicate the NOx wave. I'll duplicate the NO wave. And I will duplicate the ozone wave. Okay, and so then I'll go ahead and display those in the table along with the time wave. So those are all the waves I made. I was just holding control, select multiple waves at once. Um, and then I'm going to switch the format to date and time. So again, you can see that uh, time is right. Now, if you wanted to add more waves, you could just go to table and append columns to table and select whatever you wanted to put in the, in the table. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, so, the first thing we've got to do now, now what we've got to do is convert our voltage readings here into parts per billion. So we're going to do that by simply multiplying by our response factor. So for CO, the response factor is 2,000 um, parts per billion per volt. So we're going to say CO times equals, times equals means we're multiplying by every element in the wave, 2,000. You can see here we've got realistic looking... CO um, readings in parts per billion. The NOx response factor is 20 parts per billion per volt. Oops, I screwed up once again. Got to write parts per billion there. NO response factor is the same. Uh, 
and the ozone response factor is 50. Okay, so now we have all of our data in parts per billion. What we're going to want to do now is since we have NOx and NO, but we don't have NO2, we're going to want to make a wave for NO2. So to make a wave, we want to know how many points we need in the wave. So it's going to be 4320. 4320, not 4319, because the waves start off at point zero, not point one. So to make a wave, we click on data, make waves. We want to name it. And then we need to enter the number of points. Click do it. And now we'll go ahead and just append that to the table. So we'll click table, append column to table, and NO2 parts per billion. And there it is. So to calculate what NO2 is, we'll go NOx minus NO. And then we'll go back to the beginning. Say NO2 equals NOx minus NO. And there we go. One thing to note here is we have negative values in our NO wave, which as you might guess, is physically impossible. So what we need to do is use our data masher to clean out all of these negative values. So the way we do that is we go to our clean waves tab in the data masher. We set an upper bound that's really high. I mean, if you wanted to clean out um, high values, you could do that. Um, I, but then we set a low bound of zero. We'll select um, NO as our data wave. We'll select the time as our time wave. And then we'll just go ahead and click Clean by Value. And you can see all of those negative numbers fall right out. Now we'll go ahead and recalculate NO2 um, because we have some erroneous NO2 values because NO2 can't be higher than NOx. And when NO is negative, then that by, by definition is. So we're going to go ahead and recalculate NO2 and thereby take out all of the um, NO2 values that are higher than NOx. So. That will conclude our first video, which is um, entering data into Igor, um, correcting our time wave, um, converting our waves into parts per billion, and in gen generally being able to display waves and tables and operating on waves. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next video.